Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. Busy week, very busy week for me. Things are flying around. Got a few things to do. First of all, I got some regular maintenance, some key maintenance on my uh, my automobile key, you know, the fob they call it or whatever, the battery died. Let's go do that first and then we'll get to today's project. Okay, before we get started with for today's first project, I want to just point out this is the vise I'm going to be using today. I pulled this out for certain projects. I absolutely love this vise, okay? Now, I had a, a Wilton bullet vise and I, uh, I, gave, I traded it or gave it away years ago. I wasn't a big fan of it, okay? But this vise, I, I feel, is superior to the uh, to the Wilton vise, just my opinion, like I said, and the one I had, okay? The one I had was a little bit old, worn. But this is a uh, made in Czechoslovakia. It is a York 100. You know, they came in different sizes. They're, uh, at, at the time when I bought it, it was still affordable. You could still find these at a decent price. Uh, the, the Wilton bullet vise is actually a copy of this vise. And uh, there's a long story that goes with it. I did a video on it. But this is just a terrific vice. And if you're looking in the market and you like that style, that kind of style of bullet vice or whatever, for me, it don't matter. The style don't matter. But I just like this particular vice. I like the uh, the size of it, the shape. It's a great vice if you're looking for vice to pick up. And uh, I wanted to show you a couple things. See, I, I never used the swivel feature. And to swivel this vice, you have to use a wrench, you know, to loosen up the nuts and swivel it. But I never use it. So that's not a, a deterrent for me. But there are a couple things about this vice that I really like and, and things you should look for when going to buy a vice and I'm going to show now, you. Now I have a bunch of my vices, uh, on, uh, except for my great-grandfather's vice that I use all the time. But I have a, a lot of them on a simple 2 by 8 piece of slab of, of uh, construction lumber. And I bolt it to that and then I just take this and I clamp it to wherever I want to use it. It's a great design. Now... One thing you want to look for, one of the most important things that you want to look for, for me, in a vise, is the cant of the jaws, okay? So, what you want to do is, you want to take the jaws, open it up to about a half an inch, and move it back and forth, and see how much slop you have, okay? If you have a lot of slop in there... That is a problem because what happens, and, and don't get me wrong, the slop won't really affect how it holds. In fact, sometimes the slop can help because as you're tightening down on something that might be a little crooked, it'll conform to the item. The problem is it also makes for a weaker vice. This, you can see, has very, it's, it's, the tolerances are fantastic, okay? Secondly, it's a very smooth vice, okay? The threads are covered up, which most are now, but you know, with the, uh, the covering of the threads, so you have to worry like my great grandfather's vice. But, uh, and how it closes. Look how that lines up, that jaw. It lines up just perfect. And, and like I said, there's no. Uh, slop to it. It's just a beautiful vice. And uh, if you are in a market and you come across these, Ben, my buddy, the tool addict from the UK, has a, a good selection of these vices, uh, different sizes. But I think the 100 is a perfect size for any shop. It's not that heavy. You can carry it around. You can move it around when you need it. And it's big enough that, uh, you know, for what kind of work you're going to have to do. I mean, how many times do we have to put something in there that's six or seven inches? You know what I mean? That's, that's as much as you're going to use and i just love this vice if you see one and you come across it and it's cheap buy it i promise you you will love it okay this is today's first project this is the key to my vehicle this vehicle i have a second key obviously that comes with it and uh there's even a third one that doesn't have the chip in it uh and this key here as you can see uh, two things the, the battery is dead and i gotta tell you i got 14 years out of this battery so i cannot complain the battery's dead, but there is also a little bit of a, a bend to the key. You can see that when I hold it next to something straight, it's about here. Now you have to be very careful because it could be a little stress crack like right there. And then the other side, you know, so you don't want to snap this key because, you know, and um, the bend is right about here. It must have got caught something when I used to drive the bus or whatever, and it got caught between the seat. I want to just straighten it out first before we change the battery. And to do that, uh, I'm going to use the uh, the block method of wood and the vise, and I'll show okay, you. Okay, very mean. simply, what you're going to need is three pieces of small wood. Again, we're dealing with a key, so it's very small. We're going to put two pieces of wood on one side, one on the other, and use the vise as a more or less a miniature dake. Let me show you how this works. Okay, you see here we have the uh, key positioned in the vise with the one piece where we want to press it down, a uh, one on the tip and one back here. And we're going to just add a little bit of pressure to the vise now, very gently. Uh, because again, you don't want to, it, now the wood's going to take up some of the bend, you know, because it'll compress a little bit, but 
we just want it to bend right in the middle there and uh, I'm adding a little bit more pressure and again you don't want this to snap but you want it to straighten out and uh, one thing about a bend is it will usually want to come back to the original straightness of where it was but you can see how we bent it back now we'll loosen it check it out same thing we do with the dake to see how far we got and uh, again the position these blocks take a little of time but uh, we'll see if we need to add a little bit more yeah we still got a little bit of bend to take out of it we'll do it again we'll move it down a little bit because the bend seems to be up. okay this should be the last bend here uh, we're gonna go just a little bit past it okay bring it back now that should be good okay this is where the one of those huge bit sets come in you can see here now after 20 years of being in pockets or whatever so it's always a good idea to take some isopropyl alcohol on a q-tip make sure there's no dirt in it clean it out as much as you can you're gonna have a lot of lint and things like that in that little hole it's super small i'm using a posi drive look how small that tip is posi drive zero zero and let's see if that'll okay, work okay now i can't stress how small this is but the posi drives are excellent tips and you know we didn't have an issue with this one thank god it's not too tight and you can see it's coming off nicely we will dig out some of that additional dirt when we get it out of here but now we're going to pull this screw off here you can see there's that screw that's a very small screw and then what we're going to do is we're going to separate the case and that'll expose the battery here we go now i can only imagine what has been in this look at that i mean this is 14 years of being everywhere so uh they got a little case a protective case here jeez and you got to pry this off here but look at that dirt that is something huh jeez that is a mess but uh we'll pry this off here okay there's the key housing again what we're going to do is we're going to uh clean everything up before we put it back together but this is the housing part here that we have to separate, clean up, and take out the battery. Now I wiped it off with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, alcohol. But in the corner here, there's a little slot that you take a screwdriver and pry up. And you'll get one corner. I have one corner up. Again, I didn't open it yet, but I have one corner up. Now, I, when I opened the case, there was two plastic shards that fell out. And they were broken off from another side. I don't know if it came that way from the factory. I don't. This has never been opened before, so I don't know how that happened. But uh, now we're just going to continue to open this up. And again, there are these little detents there. But once you kind of work the case open and around to get it off, uh, it'll pop open. But you don't want to put any force because the plastic, after so many years, gets brittle. Just remember the way it goes back on. And there is the battery, positive side up. You can see here. In this case, it's a CR2016 3 volt, and it is a Panasonic. So let's uh, change. Now, here's that something out. I always found amazing. I'm sure you did too. You know, with these button cells, you know, you could buy one battery for two dollars, or you could buy four batteries for three dollars, or eight batteries for four dollars, and it keeps going up, and it it gets incrementally, it gets to the point where you could buy uh, 150 batteries for like ten dollars. You know, when do you stop? And the other thing is that you have to look for the date codes on here, okay? And if you look in the back here on these uh, packages, you could see right there uh, on the right hand side here, you could see there's a little numbers here. You see that? And you'll see that it says PD, that's production date. And you could see here it was 7 2020. And the expiration date, ED, is uh, 2030, okay? So uh, we're pretty good with these, but that's a, a, one thing to look for. Another thing to look for, try and get a name brand. Uh, you know, we've all, did we you ever make that mistake of buying that button cell excess, uh, assortment at Harbor Freight? That's a no name assortment and every one of those batteries don't even, you know, work. So always buy name brand and, and get something that's fresh, fairly Take fresh. Take the old battery out. There's a little slot here. You see that corner? You slip uh, anything under there. You pry this up and it will pop out, literally pop out. Now, to get the new one in, it's important. You want to slide it under these two and then make this connection here. That's your connection. And, and then pop this in at the end. And it goes one, two, three. And there's the new battery. And then just uh, reverse to get it back Clean together. Clean out your case with all that grime. Just uh, put some isopropyl alcohol in there. 
at your friend isopropyl alcohol and take a Q-tip, swirl it around, and don't be afraid to use a bunch of Q-tips here to get all this gr dirt and grime out and then uh, dry it off. And that's the beauty of isopropyl alcohol. It'll dry right off. Okay, we're all cleaned up and ready for reassembly. Now, if you don't have one of those multi-tip uh, screwdriver sets, it, next time you're in Harbor Freight or something, you see these on sale, pick this set up. I mean, even if you use it a couple times, and it does have very small, a jeweler's screwdriver set, always good to have. They come in many different forms, and they're usually of good quality. You know, you don't see these usually twisting and bending, even the inexpensive ones from the Asian ones. So you need that. Every once in a while, you're going to need one of those and tools. There we go, a simple maintenance job you can do yourself, and uh, we'll test this panic here at about 2 a.m. to make sure it works in the driveway. Okay, next up, uh, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, I've been on YouTube for a long time. Not so much in the creator aspect, but I was watching videos, and I remember when YouTube first started, it was a whole different ball game. It wasn't monetized, and everybody was in it for the fun. And um, I remember, and one of the beginning things that we were all getting into, all of us that were kind of watching the YouTube in the beginning, was these alcohol penny stoves. You remember those that made out of two aluminum cans? Boy, that was a rage. What fun we had making them. And I said, you know, there's a lot of people probably out there that never even heard of them or know how easy it is to make and what fun it is to do with the kids or something. Let's make one, okay? Let's have some fun. Let's get right okay, to it. Okay, let's have some old-timey YouTube fun. The penny stove. Why do they call it a penny stove? Well, all you need is a couple of aluminum cans and uh, a magic marker, block of wood, a penny. And let me show you how we're going to do this, okay? The first thing you're going to do is lay the marker flat against the top of a... I'm using a, a three-quarter inch. It has to be about... The line has to be about an inch off of the bottom of the can. You're going to press this over here and you're just going to turn the can like this until you make a, a nice line all the way around and then you're going to cut that. Okay, you see how that line is all the way around? Then we're going to cut that out with a pair of scissors to get cut to the line. Take a pair of scissors, take the sharp point, pierce the aluminum like that and just cut around. Don't try and get on the line right away. Work your way down around the can until you get close to that line and then cut on the line. Okay, when you get close to it, like we went around once, now we can cut on the line. Don't have to be exact, just, just like that. Okay, and uh, here we go. And don't worry about your scissors, it's very easy to cut this stuff, okay? There we go, that's one, we're gonna do it okay, again. Okay, now we have two cans approximately cut one inch high. Okay, you're gonna take a marker, you're gonna make a mark in the middle of the can right there, just in the middle. And then right where that edge, you see where that little lip forms, you're gonna put a mark here. Okay, you see that one mark there? And then you're gonna go 180 degrees, which is the opposite side, you're gonna put a mark there. Okay, and then you're gonna go 90 degrees, put a mark here. And then 180 degrees from that. So in other words, you're going to put one on, if you had a clock, it would be 12, 3, 6, and 9, okay? And then once you got those four, you're going to cut it in half, okay? You're going to cut each one of those. You're going to put a hole in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. And when I say a hole, I'm just making a marker, mark, okay? I'm marking each one in half, and then you're going to cut that one more time in half. So when you're finished... It should look like that. You see those holes going around? They're not holes, they're marker. Okay, when you finish, you should have 16 equally spaced marks all the way around the ridge right there. And we want to make five little holes, little marks here. We're going to make holes in a minute that look like uh, the number five of a domino or a dice, okay? So uh, now you got that on the crease. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a push pin. Or if you don't have a push pin, you could use a T pin. Or you can even use a, a needle, a heavy needle with a vice grips or something. But what you're going to do is you're going to make a hole in each one where these marks are. You're going to take the pin here and you're going to press it in and make a hole. And remember, on the crease and just push it in and it'll go in. Just give it, you know, a little bit of pressure and wiggle it back and forth if you have to. And there you go. It'll go right in and you do that 16 times 
all the way around. Now, if you happen to have a micro drill set in a Dremel, you could use the drill to make the holes. But uh, And if you want, you can use a T-pin. Uh, I like to put it into a vice grip. Just makes it that much easier to push it in. But here we have, we have our 16 holes around the edge, five in the middle. Now we're getting to the fun part. We're going to take the bottom piece and we're going to make a little pleating. Okay, next we're going to take the bottom of the can and using a needle nose plier and just give it a little turn every three quarters of an inch. We're just going to pleat the bottom here. Just And what we're doing is we're creating little creases to uh, reduce the diameter a little bit of the bottom can so that it will fit inside of the top. Okay, and it, it should look like this and just reduce it a little bit and then we're going to it's going to take a couple seconds, but you're going to squeeze this into the bottom uh, of the bottom of can into the top can and squeeze the two together and I'll show you what that looks like. It takes a couple seconds to do. Okay, here we are. We have it uh, pressed in. You see the bottom here. Now what you want to do is you just want to press it all the way around, get it into even and it'll start to make a nice tight fit towards the bottom. Okay, and it's good to have something flat to knock it down on and just squeeze it until it doesn't go down anymore. Okay, when you're all the way in and that's what it's going to look like here. You'll hear it. It's all the way in now. Okay, now when it's all the way in, what you want to do is there's that little edge here and you're just going to take something, knock that edge down. Okay, and make that a uh, nice little seal. So take the back of your needle nose or something, an ice cream stick or anything, and just make this round around the bottom. And there we go. There's your completed stove. Now, what you're going to do, you could wipe this off with steel wool, make it look really nice. But now what you're going to do is you're going to fill This can take a variety of different fuels. I'm going to use denatured alcohol, but you could use 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can use heat. Uh, which is a fuel additive. You can use uh, grain alcohol. That You can use vodka if you're in an emergency, all kinds of things. So uh, I'll show you how we're going to do. We're going to fill it up about halfway with the denatured alcohol. We're going to light it, and then we're going to put a penny over the top, and that'll stop the top. This is just fill holes. That's all those five holes are in the middle. So let's fill it up about halfway and light it up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we have it a little, about half full with the denatured alcohol. You pour a little bit in, let it drain through the holes, just a little bit at a time. Now, before it all drains through, you're gonna light the top of this up and you'll see, you see what happens. Now we spilled a little over there. That's just gonna help it bloom as we call it. Now, move your fuel away and let this burn. And what's gonna happen is now the fuel is going to boil because the alcohol will uh, boil and when it does it'll start shooting out the holes the little jet holes so that takes about about a minute or so so i'm going to put you on time lapse so okay you there it. it is uh it was only about 30 seconds actually but now you can see the fuel is starting to boil the alcohol and there is your stove and isn't that isn't that just something and i'm telling you you want to have a lot of fun you could make this and then you could this will boil water in a couple minutes it's a great emergency stove to have um again we're using denatured alcohol now what you're going to do is you're going to take that penny you're going to throw it over the middle and that'll just uh stop any of the uh you know flare-ups or whatever that you could see is happening but now what's going to happen is you'll have a nice solid flame you really should make this stove. It's an excellent stove, a lot of fun, easy to make. You could see it costs next to nothing. You could use all types of fuels. Have some fun, make this stove. Okay, it's been run about five minutes. You can see what a beautiful flame that is. Looks just like a gas burner on the stove, doesn't it? What a fun project. So in closing, I can't tell you how much fun it is with those little stoves. You'll get a kick out of it. Build it with some kid that you know or nephew, grandchild, child, and they'll have a blast. They'll think the world of you. And uh, the thing will burn for enough to boil water, and it's just a great, great little skill to know. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Also, don't forget the Key Caddy Challenge is due by Friday midnight. Send any photos into my email address right here. Take care now. Bye-bye.